Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oat Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, presents by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking his trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Is electricity your friend? Yes, in most cases. It can be a bad enemy, though, if you direct it through electrical wires which have frayed insulation and can result in costly fires. Remember, the electricity in your home should be your servant, not your boss. But careless wiring will help electricity take over. Check the wires on your electrical appliances, lamp cords, and the other items in your home that have electric wires to make sure that the insulation is in good condition and is capable of preventing short circuits and fires. Defective wiring isn't the only way a fire can start in your home either. Don't permit rubbish or waste paper to accumulate. Clean out your cellar, attic, and closets and eliminate possible starting places for fires. Almost a thousand fires daily take place in homes across the country, due in most cases to carelessness. Be sure your home isn't one of them. Check up and clean up. Don't gamble with fire. The odds are against you. This message is brought to you as a public service. October, and the evening was sharp and cold as the river pack at Yukon Queen made its way on the last trip north to Dawson. Sergeant Preston and his great dog, King, had gone aboard at 40 Mile and were headed for Mountie headquarters at Dawson. Preston and King walked to the deck rail and stood watching the bleak landscape as it moved slowly by. A short distance away, young man and woman stood watching the scenery. The man turned and looked at the Mountie and dog and then spoke to the woman. Alan, look at that big hutchman. I'm sure hate to have him jump at him. Oh, Bertie, he is big. He has friendly eyes. King's but... well trained. He wouldn't attack anyone unless I ordered him to. He's gentle and friendly to people he likes, aren't you, boy? Oh, 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 oh. oh he sure is a beauty. Yes, isn't he? May I pet him? Of course. Hello, King. Why, you have a nice big coat. Oh, 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 oh. I noticed by your uniform that you're a sergeant, the Northwest Mounted Police. That's right. I'm Sergeant Preston. Oh, I'm Bert Demarest, and this is my wife, Alice. I've heard so much about the Mounties. I'm glad to meet you, Sergeant. So am I, Sergeant. Thank you. You from the States? Yes. From Seattle. We're heading for Selkirk. I see. You'll reach there just about the time winter sets in. I hope I can stand the winters here. It took a lot of persuading on Bert's part to get me to come. I hope you have something definite to do, Bert. Getting a start up here isn't quite as easy as the stories might lead one to believe. Oh, we have, sir. An uncle of mine who came up during the first gold rush died a couple of months ago and left his gold claim to him. Oh. That's why we're going to South I see. Frankly, I've told Bert it's a gamble. We sold our home in Seattle, and Bert gave up a job with Wells Fargo to come here. Well, after all, Alice, I had that letter from a lawyer in Selkirk saying the claim had been willed to me and that I have to come here to settle things. Uh, are you going through to Selkirk, Sergeant? Why, not by boat, Bert. I haven't been through Selkirk since last spring, but after I stopped at headquarters in Dawson, I'll pick up my dog team and head down that way. I'll be in Selkirk within two weeks, and I'll look you up to see how you're getting along. Bye, and good luck. Goodbye, Goodbye Sergeant. Sergeant. Come on, King. When they finally arrived in Selkirk, Bert and Alice Demarest left the boat and went to the hotel. 
The following morning, they walked to the office of lawyer Zach Kane, a sharp-featured, steely-eyed man who had written the letter to Burton. I hope the lawyer is in this early. Yeah, we'll soon find out. Come on. Good morning. What can I do for you? Your lawyer, Kane? Yes, that's right. I'm Bert Demarest, and this is my wife. How do you do? We arrived on a boat last night. I received a letter from oh, you about... Yes, the... yes, of course, of course. I'm glad to see you. Sit down, sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, here's the uh, the letter you sent, Mr. Kane. Oh, yes. Will you, uh, will you have a cigar, Bert? No, no. Thanks, Mr. Kane. I don't smoke. Uh, your uh, Uncle Ed talks so much about you, I feel that I already know you you see, I wasn't only his lawyer, but Ed Morrow and I were also good friends. His death was a shock to me. He caught pneumonia and died within a couple of days. How terrible. Oh, poor Uncle Ed. He was always nice to me. Yes, a fine man, your uncle. Of course, he was getting along in years, but seemed to hold up well. It was kind of him to make a will favoring Bert. Yes, he was wise enough to make a will, and he appointed me to take care of things and get it settled. How long will it take, Mr. Mm, no time at all, Bert. All that is necessary is for you to sign a couple of papers, that's all. Uh, <clears throat> this small cash box contains the cash and personal effects your uncle left. I'll, I'll open it. Here's gold cufflinks. Nice gold watch and chain. Uh, what about a bank account? Then Didn't Uncle Ed... The cash is all here. One hundred dollars. A hundred dollars? Mm, that's right. Of course, Bert gets the gold claim, too. I'll uh, take you out there this morning, if you like. The sooner the better. But, well, you see, Mr. King, we figured if Uncle Ed had a gold claim, he'd leave more than a hundred dollars. There's a cabin and furnishings out of the claim, so you'll have a place to live. How far is it to the claim? Well, about uh, five miles east of here, Bert. Uh, well, we, uh, we'll have to have some way to get back and forth to town. Yes, yes, of course. I may be able to arrange for dogs and a sled if you decide to stay there at the cabin. There's no place else we could stay. Until Bert gets more gold from the claim, we'll, we'll have frankly, to... frankly, I don't think the claim pays off too well. What? Oh, Bert, if it doesn't pay off much, what will we live on through the winter? Well, Uncle Ed must have made a living from it, honey. The only thing for us to do is to go live in the cabin and see what we can take from the claim when we work. Yes, yes, of course. That is the thing to do. Now, after you sign these papers, Bert, I'll get the horses and the rig from the livery stable, and we'll go out to the cabin. After Bert signed the papers showing that he'd received his uncle's estate from Lawyer Kane, the young couple left Selkirk in a rig with the lawyer leading the way on horseback. They soon arrived at the cabin to be their new home. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Kane, is this the right cabin? Surely Bert's uncle did This is it, Mrs. Devers. Oh. Just as if Morrow left it. We'll go in and look it over. It's sure a weather beaten old place. Yeah. Badly in need of repair. Yeah. Uh, come on, honey. Thank you. Uh, I'll unlock the door. Uh. Bert, I couldn't possibly imagine a worse place. But how on earth could your uncle or, or anyone else have lived in a cabin like this? I don't know, Alice. If Uncle had lived here, he would have... There's your that... uncle's picture on the table, Bert. Oh, yes. Yes, that is Bert's uncle, all right. He sent us a picture just like this one. Ellis, the condition of this place is sure disappointing. If I had enough money, we'd get back on the boat and leave for the States. Oh, it's awful. Holes in the roof, rickety chairs, it's dust over everything. Bert, what are we going to do? Well, now there's no use being upset about it, Mrs. Devonish. It'd take a little hard work, but if Bert is handy at repairing, he could make it livable. Oh, it isn't that so much. Now look, but... why not give it a try? Stay here a couple of days or so and look things over. You'll uh, find the claim out behind the cabin. Oh, we'd have to go to town for supplies. Well, I expected know. you on the boat that docked last night, so yesterday I brought out a stock of food to last a few days. Oh, thanks. But I sure wish we knew what we were getting into before we came all the way up here. If we had, we wouldn't have come to Selkirk. Perhaps if you'd given Bert more details in that letter... And under I... the circumstances, I'm sorry now that I didn't. I'll tell you what. Stay here a few days. 
I'll leave the horse and rig with you. Then if you don't think you can make a go of it, maybe I can find someone to buy out the claim for, uh, well, for at least enough to get you back to Seattle. I'm uh, sure I can get a few hundred dollars for it. That's awfully kind of you, Mr. Kane, but no, we can't... Don't say no more about it, Mrs. Demarest. I feel a bit guilty about this matter, and I know I can push through the deal in time for you to take the boat at the end of next week, if you uh, want to leave. Well, we'll stay a couple of days then and look things up. Good, then. Now, if you decide to go back, just come into town and let me know. There's a shed out back where you can stable the horse. There's feet out there for it. And uh, it will be safe from prowling animals. Prowling animals? Oh, now, I shouldn't have frightened you. Oh. But it's better to be on the safe side in case a good easily or a few hungry wolves oh. should come along. That I'll, let, I'll get back to town now. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, have you had the thrill lately of being right there in the ballpark when the lead-off man steps up to the plate? Have you been there to see the star players in person? See the wallop home runs? See the exciting double plays? Well, don't miss the fun another day. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. Yes, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker Pop wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. That afternoon, Bert went out and looked over the claim. Even to his inexperienced eyes, it showed little promise. And yet he was determined to give it a try. He found no tools with which to work. And so taking the rig, he drove into town to the trading post. When he entered and approached the counter, the old storekeeper looked him over critically. I want to buy a pick and shovel. A uh, pick and shovel. Sure, and you're new here, aren't you, mister? Oh, that's right, I am. I'll get the things you want. When did you get into Selkirk? There you are. Uh, like I just said, when did you get in? I came in on a boat last night. Uh, that's five dollars for the pick and five for the shovel, mister. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. Uh, my name's Mike Kelly. What's yours? Bert Demarest. Bert Demarest, huh? You fixing to work a claim? Yes, my wife and I have a claim about five miles east of here. Five miles east, you say? Say, no. You don't mean that worn-out claim where that cabin is with the porch roof rotted off. Yes, that's it. Huh. I hate to get you down, son, but an old sourdough gave up that claim some time ago. It's worked out. Hope he didn't put any money into getting it. No, no, it, it was well to me. <laughs> that's sure something to leave to somebody, all right. <laughs> Better not waste your time trying to work that claim, Demonist. Anything else? No, thanks. That's all. I'll be in again. Goodbye. Goodbye, son, and good luck. You'll sure need it. During the next few days, the temperature dropped and heavy snows fell. It was the first part of the following week when Sergeant Preston and King, coming down from Dawson, stopped with the dog team in front of the trading post. Okay. Come on, boy. Hello, Mike. Hello, well, well. Sergeant Preston and King. Good to see you again. Oh, oh, oh. Nice seeing you, Mike. We haven't been here in Selkirk for some time. Ah, uh, sure we missed you. That we did. What can I do for you, Sergeant? I stopped in to ask about a young couple I met on the boat. Maybe you can tell me where to find them. Well, no, maybe I could. Uh, what are their names, Sergeant? Bert Demarest and his wife. Bert inherited a gold claim around here. Bert Demarest. Say no. There was a young fellow by that name come in here a while back and bought a pick and shovel. Uh, the poor chap, he sure looked downcast when I told him about that claim he inherited. He could dig out there till doomsday without turning up as much as a grain of gold. Oh? Sure, nobody's been near the place for nigh on to a year, I'd say, Sergeant. 
The old sourdough who used to have it gave up and went to Whitehorse. Well, that's odd. Demarus told me his uncle died here about two months ago and left everything to him. The only one who's died around here was old Ed Morrow. It was a little over two months ago. Ed Morrow? He owned the big strike mine? That's right. Now, if it was something like that that Demarus inherited, they'd really have something. Yes, I... Mike, is there a lawyer here in town now? Sure is, Sergeant. A fellow named Zach Kane. He and Morrow were as thick as two peas, that they were. Oh, I see. Thanks, Mike. You've given me an idea. If I'm right, King and I have a case to solve and we'll have to move fast. While Sergeant Preston and King were at the trading post, a man hurriedly entered Lawyer Kane's office. Well, what's your hurry, Blinky? The wolves chasing you? Uh, you better stop puffing on that cigar and listen to what I have to say, Kane. Well, what is it? I just saw Sergeant Preston and his dog going to the trading post. What about it? If he should happen to run into that fellow Demarest, he might ask questions, seeing as how Demarest is a stranger around here. You'd better do something about closing that deal in quick. Yes, I guess you're right at that. If I can get Buck to sign with his claim to me, I'll be sitting pretty, and they'll just disappear. Yes, the fool is still trying to work that dead claim out there. Thought he'd give up by now and come in to take up your proposition. Yes, so did I. The only thing to do now is for me to take the paper and the money and go out there. You better do some fast talking. The last boat to the States leaves here in a couple of days, and they better be on it. I'll talk them into it. After they sign, I'll take them by a shortcut over to your place near the big strike mine for a couple of nights, and then see that they take the boat when it sails. You better go out behind the office, get your dog team together, and head for Demarest. Then maybe you better follow the back trail out of town. Since you're fairly new around here, Preston might ask questions if he met you. Yes, all right. I'll take the paper with me. I'll uh, put on my things and get going. You lock up the office after I leave, and then keep your eyes on Preston. The lawyer left by the back way. It was about five minutes later that Sergeant Preston and King stopped out front. Blinky, who was just about to leave, heard Sergeant Preston stop. He sat down behind the desk and waited. Well, Sergeant, come right in. Thanks. Are you the lawyer, Mr. Kane? Uh, No, no. Uh, Mr. Kane is out of town. Uh, Went out of town for a few days on business. I see. When do you expect him back? Well, I can't say, Sergeant. He just asked me to drop in here and take any messages that might come in for him. You sure Kane went out of town? Well, yes, yes, I'm sure. Huh. Sorry I missed him. By the way, may I offer you a cigar? Oh, no, no thanks. I, I don't smoke them. Neither do I. Oh, why, Gary? Who are you and what are you doing here? I'm Blinky Hawkins, a friend of Zach Kane's. Besides playing office boy for Kane, what else do you do around Selkirk? Now, uh, listen, Mom. No, you listen to me. I've seen you around town before. You're a manager of the Big Strike Mining Company. Well, what if I am? You told me you didn't smoke cigars. So that smoldering cigar butt there on the desk tells me someone left here in a hurry just before I came in. You lied about Kane being away, didn't you? Look, Molly, you have no right to come in here. I'll look around the back. Hey, hold on, you. Hey, Kane evidently left in a hurry with his dog team. I have some questions to ask him, so I'll trail him. As for you, Hawkins, I might want to ask you a few questions, so stay around town till I get back. Come on, King. Up front, boy. All right, on the on continue our adventure in just a moment. You should have been at the ball game today. I saw three home runs. And guess what? I got one of the home run balls. Fellas and girls, why don't you get a free baseball ticket? It's easy. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right now inside packages of Quaker Pop Wheat, Quaker Pop Rice, Muppet Shredded Wheat, and Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see wonderful major or minor league baseball games free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get as many free tickets as you want. No mailing, no waiting. When mom buys breakfast cereal, just be sure she gets the kind with a free baseball ticket inside. That's Quaker Pop wheat and rice and Muffet shredded wheat. 
you get two free baseball tickets inside Quaker Paco 10. So don't miss out another day. See the star players wallop those home runs. <laughs> Now to continue. Once more, it had begun to snow heavily. And not knowing where Kane was heading, Preston and King were slowed a bit as they tried to follow his trail in the storm. In their small cabin, Alice and Bert Demarest glanced at each other as they listened to the moaning of the wind outside. Bert, the last boat for the state leaves here day after tomorrow. I know, I know, dear. But if this storm keeps up, we can't use the horses to get to town. But maybe if we left tonight and took a room at the no, hotel... No, we couldn't but... chance it without a dog team, Alice. I've been a fool not to have gone in and accepted Kane's offer before this. Oh, we can't stay here. I, I just can't stand it. But we have to do something right away before it's too late. That awful wind and those wolves howling last I night. I know how it you, Alice. <laughs> Someone's coming. Oh. Hello. Hello Well, it's Mr. Kane. Come in, come in. Oh, Mr. Kane coming out in all this storm, but... I'm so glad to see you. Oh, I know the way out here blindfolded, Mrs. Demist. I used to come off in the seabirds, Uncle. Yeah, that's right. I've been so worried and frightened out here. We must get away as soon as possible. Well, it's a good thing I came out then. My office still holds, if you want to accept it. In fact, I brought out the paper for Bert to sign if he wants to. Uh, yes, of course you'll sign it. But the boat, suppose it doesn't come oh, through. Oh, the boat will come through, all right. The river hasn't iced up enough to stop it. But could we get to town, all right? Uh, yes, of course. I'll see to that. I have the paper for you, Bert. And here's the pen. You'd uh, better read it first. I uh, never let people sign things without reading the mobile. Read it, Bert, out loud. All right. I, Bert Demarest, do hereby give up all right and title to the Big Strike Mine and other properties to Zachary Kane for the sum of $300. I have the cash with me. Oh, Mr. Kane, you're so good to us. Oh, that's right, he is. But... What's this big strike mine mean? Oh, that's the way this claim was registered, Bert. Your uncle wanted to give it a name, poor chap. Oh. And here's the pen. Thanks. Now sign it right there on that line. All right. Bert, wait a minute. As Sergeant Preston and King entered, the wind in a sudden gust blew the paper off the table across the cabin. The paper? The wind blew it off the table. I'll get it. Shut it, King. Get that paper. No, no, no. Get him away from it. Easy, King. Bring it here, boy. Uh, listen, uh, give me that Good paper. Dog. I'll report you to headquarters. You have no right butting in on this transaction. The deal was almost completed. Oh, this is an interesting document, Kane. Sergeant, why are you interfering? Mr. Kane is only trying to help us. He's only trying to cheat Bert out of one of the richest mines what? in this territory. Yes. The big strike mine formerly owned by Ed Murrow. Well, that's my uncle's name. I know. Kane tried to obtain your signature by fraud. Oh, my. Oh. The bullet coming through the window had barely creased Preston's forehead, and he stood momentarily stunned. But the great dog king moved into immediate action instinctively. With a deep throated growl, he moved back and then sprang. The big husky had leaped straight through the window, and it landed on the figure of Blinky outside, taking the crook completely by surprise and knocking him to the snow covered ground. Before Blinky, who had his breath knocked out by the sudden attack, could move, King grabbed his arm, causing the crook to drop his gun. Help! Help! Get him away! Sergeant Preston, leaving Bert inside with a gun to watch Zach Kane, quickly approached King and the struggling crook. Oh, help! Take him away! He's hungry, son, boy. Oh, 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 he jumped me. He came through the window. Oh, my arm. Get inside, John. Oh, my arm. My arm. Who is he, Sergeant? This is Blinky Hawkins, manager of the Big Strike Mining Company, Bert. That's your company now, you know. You, you have nothing against us, nothing. They were going to sign that paper of their own free will. Here's the paper, Bert. Okay. As a lawyer, Kane, you know the charge of attempted murder against a member of the Mounted Police will stand against both of you. Not to mention your attempt to take over the Big Strike Mine by fraud. Uh, wait a minute, Kay. I had no knowledge that Blinky followed you out here to shoot at you. Now, you told me to watch that, Mowney. You're just as much to blame as I am, Kane. We'll let the court decide uh, that. Does all this mean that Bert really inherited something worthwhile, Sergeant? Yes, Mrs. Demarest, it does. Oh. In addition to the Big Strike Mine, Bert inherited a large home in Selkirk. Oh, Bert, we won't have to go back to the States after all. You hadn't been so slow, Kane. You'd have got them to sign that paper long ago. and got them away from town. Good thing they didn't get you to sign sooner, Bert. Both you and Alice might suddenly have disappeared. I've met men like Kane before. A disgrace to a fine profession. They'll probably find he was disbarred in the States. 
So he came to Selkirk where he wasn't known. But if I was, you think you were smart, don't you? But if it hadn't been for that dog, Blinky could have shot again. Maybe, but King was here, Kane. Oh, when I think how close you came to being killed, Sergeant, it, it makes me shiver. I deserve that bullet crease as a lesson. As a lesson? Yes, I should have known Blinky would follow me out here from town. I think you were plenty smart to figure things out and follow Kane here, Sergeant. Thanks, Bert. I'm so glad we met you and King on the boat. Otherwise, those men would have succeeded in doing us out of Bert's inheritance. And you and your husband might have been murdered after they had what they wanted. Kane, I arrest you and Blinky in the name of the Crown for attempted murder. As soon as I get you to jail, this case will be closed. Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Your musical treat of the day waits for you throughout the week on Mutual. Each Tuesday and Thursday evening, it's time for Eddie Fisher and a session of music as everyone likes it. Young and old delight in Eddie Fisher's way with a song. And he's joined on every show by Fred Robbins as MC, Alex Stordo's orchestra, and outstanding guest stars. Every Saturday, the teenager's favorite, Johnny Desmond, brings phonorama time and a roundup of the newest and best in popular recordings. On Sundays, the Enchanted Hour presents favorite music from the world's best-loved composers. Every weekday also means time for Hawaii calls and authentic melodies of the islands. Music fills Mutual's air throughout the week. Hear the Eddie Fisher Show, Johnny Desmond with Phonorama Time, Enchanted Hour, and Hawaii calls on Mutual throughout the week over most of these stations. Sergeant Preston left his great dog, King, outside and reported to Inspector Conrad. Sergeant, are you familiar with the community called Nugget Crossing? Why, yes, sir. I haven't been to the crossing in a long time, but I remember it well. There's a lot of trapping done around there. Well, those trappers are threatening trouble. As I have it, they claim that they've been defrauded of their pay for the season's catch. Unless something is done at once, they're likely to tear down the trading post. Well, they can't do that. The post is operated by one of the finest women I know and one of the most honest. And, Sergeant, you'd better work fast. I'll leave at once, sir. Sergeant Preston cannot possibly be forewarned that the crooks who stole the trapper's gold will kill to avoid exposure. They would even kill a Mountie. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. <laughs> <laughs>